This is E2900, Week 7, Lecture 3, Dr. Bharatwaj Bhartmuthaswamy recording. Last time where we left off was we synthesized this beautiful uh, generic specification of a ripple carry adder and we verified, well, I told you that the design works because I downloaded the DUN board and I couldn't record it, but uh, please download the reference design from the website and download it to the DUN board and check. But today, what we're going to do is we're going to perform a functional simulation of our design in model sim. So let me close the recording folder of debut. So now, before we get started with functional simulation, uh, combinational logic design does not really do justice to the power of simulation using model sim. However, you will need simulation for sequential logic design in the case of the in the case of MSOE, E2902 and later, so into E3921, etc. And model sim is not only the industry standard for digital design simulation, there's a reason for it, that it is very robust. But this robustness, please understand, comes at an, well, I don't really see it as an expense. Probably you will see it as an expense because it's the first time you're going through model sim. Uh, however, I highly recommend that you learn how to use this tool now when you have time uh, again, you should also use this class to really iron out your VHDL skills before you get into 2902. Because, because there, sequential logic design is not like combinational logic design. Like I always say, sequential logic design is what separates uh, the women and men, if you will, from the girls and boys. That is, people who can do sequential logic design like that. That's the sequential logic is like integration, right? Combinational logic is like differentiation. Like anybody can do differentiation. Integration is where the brains is. But anyway, let's get into simulation. So the first thing you should do is in your project folder, you should create another folder called simulation. Right? Again, remember I told you, I keep emphasizing, keep all the files separate. Right? So within the simulation folder, what we're going to first create is a so-called test bench. Okay, That's the technical term for it. And a test bench is basically Ripple Carry Adder test bench. And the convention is it has the same name as your the module you're going to test in, the, in our case ripple carry adder followed by the words i mean followed by the letters tb for test bench it's a vhdl file that is not synthesizable so as a rule of thumb i don't open this file in quartus i use an external editor and i prefer notepad plus plus you can edit this in model sim itself but i just prefer notepad plus plus because it's faster and the reason why I don't use Quartus, is this test bench is non-synthesizable, okay? So you can use any VHDL construct uh, test bench for Ripple Carry Adder. So like the name says, it's a test bench. It's like a virtual environment with, into which you pass, into which you instantiate your module under test, MUT or device under test, dot. And then you pass in any signals you want and you can probe signals internal into the module to, to verify design functionality. Again, we are going to be doing functional simulation. Model sim can do a timing intensive simulation because it does have timing models for all your FPGAs. However, that's time consuming and I won't cover that in this course. In 2902, I'll definitely show you how to do a timing intensive simulation with a sequential logic design. But just as an anecdote, when I used to work in industry, one millisecond of real time to simulate timing intensive, actually not even timing intensive, sorry, functional simulation for our design took like around like 10 hours okay, for all the signals, etc. But anyway, that's just an anecdote. So let's get started with this. Uh, so this is actually, like I said, a VHDL file. So it has its standard preamble, if you will. Like you're going to use all these. I mean, you're going to use standard logic. So you're going to do this. And notice Notepad++ ha also has syntax highlighting and it recognizes VHDL. So that's nice. Okay. But here's the first change. That is, my entity statement is not going to have any ports. Okay. Because I don't know. There's no ports, right? Like it just instantiates a module under test and passes signals into it. So there it is. So architecture, simple test bench of Ripple Carry Adder test bench is, well, let me just keep the names consistent. Although we still is case insensitive. Okay, in simple test bench. So what I'm going to do now is I want to instantiate my modules under test. I, and I have only one module, 
uh, sorry, I'm going to do a component declaration, and the component I'm going to test is my Ripple Carry adder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the project, take the top level, and make a component out of it. So there it is. Okay. So here is the component, and here is end component. And again, I really like Notepad++ because it is, it's is—it's it's a very nice text editor. Right? You can use also Notepad if you want from Windows, but I prefer this. Okay, so now uh, let me declare all the signals I'm going to get. So I need two x, y input numbers, okay? So it's going to be standard logic vector 5 bits, but I'm going to pass in um, them concatenated. So let me call input numbers. So let me draw my switches basically. Standard logic vector 10 bits. And I need an each and I need each signal. I need signals for my, each of my hex displays there. That's what I was going to say. A signal for my LED, although I want to use it. I don't think I'm using my LEDs. We'll find out. Because model sim will throw out a warning. In the sense, mod, the model sim, we're going to compile our design and simulate it in the model sim environment. The model sim compiler is more strict, if you will, than the Quartus synthesizer, the, and the, or the Quartus compiler, the analysis tool. So that's good for us. Okay, so we have all our signals. So what I'm going to do first is instantiate our dot, which stands for device under test. And if you come from a testing background, that is, if you ever used a um, curve tracer, you were, I'm sure you've heard of this term, dot. Okay. So, uh, it's going to be dot is ripple carry adder port map, and here are our, um, oops, sorry, there's no end there. So, my SW is going to be my input numbers, okay? My hex 3, uh, oops, my hex 3 is going to go to my hex 3 out. Uh, my x2 is going to go to my x2 out, my x1, x1 out, x0 is going to go x0 out, okay? And my LEDG is going to go into my LEDG there. Done that. And now let me just concatenate it here. That is my input numbers. Is going to be the concatenation of y along with x. Okay. Now, use we're going to use something called as a process statement to uh, input test vectors. That's what they're called. Okay. So process begin. Pro, uh, uh, so oops. Pro, uh, So begin and then in process, okay? So in t and this is actually sequentially, sequential is one at a time by using weights. Again, weight is not like synthesizable. So for instance, let's take a look, right? So initially I want to say my Y is X, not X, sorry. One, two, three, four, five. Let's say, let's make it more exciting. Let's make X2. I'm going to wait for, 30, let's say, nanoseconds. Now, this, for example, is not synthesizable. Like, how, what do you, where do you get 30 nanoseconds from? Like, there's no, we haven't, we're not using clocks in our design. So anyway, anything goes in our test bench, any VHDL construct. So some people use asserts to display messages, etc. But I'm not going to do all that. I'm going to keep it simple. So I'm going to do, let's do 1, 2, 3, I don't know, 1, 0, 1, like 3, 4, 5, no, it's 6. So this should give us seven, and then wait. This is wait forever, so the process doesn't keep on executing. Remember, this is still VHDL, so all of these execute concurrently. Okay. But now that I have uh, created this test bench, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into I'm going to start model sim. So let me do that. So I don't actually need quarters anymore, but I'll leave it open. So here's my model sim, and there are many different ways to carry out simulation models. And I'm going to show one way, which is pretty much, which is an industry standard. I don't want to say it is the industry standard, 
by creating the concept of libraries right and scripting you don't have to use you don't have to do simulation the way i do it right but just understand that you need functional simulation eventually in when you're eventually in any kind of design so and uh, go through the model sim book uh, help uh, once it starts up model sim is a huge, it's a very powerful tool right so it it is pretty um uh, large in terms of its footprint both code footprint and memory footprint however once you get it started like it it's just i can't um yeah model sim is like the bomb right so so let's close this i mean you can go to help uh, come on help um pdf documentation so users manual tutorial etc okay so the i'm going to again use the command line and i'm going to use the concept of library so i'm going to create a library pwd is a unix uh, unix command which is print working directory i'm going to cd into my simulation directory model sim has tab completion so as that uh, in the sense i've rendered in my simulation directory mm -hmm. now what i'm going to do is i can list the directory contents there should only be one file there it is okay so i'm going to create a library called work and i'm going to map my default work library called work into this work library vmap work work okay, okay and the model sim is displaying some messages about uh, mapping the initialization file that's fine if we go back into our folder so you can see it has an ini file created there is our simulation folder it has got a work library okay this is where model sim stores all the information necessary for simulation do not touch this work library outside of model sim unless you know what you're doing right. okay now what we're going to do is we're going to compile test benches then we're going to compile test bench we have only one test bench we're going to compile our test bench then we're going to compile our source files and then we're going to simulate now there is a ve it's very easy to script this in model sim that is whatever i'm going to type on the command line in the in the kind of a, using what is called as a do file so hash marks are comments in model sim so we will work uh, do this do this only once i don't know if comments can be nested let's find out so i'm going to save this under simulation as it's called sim.2 right normal text file no let's see i want all types there so sim.2 that's what it's called I'll do this only once now vmap work work okay so whatever i'm going to type in the command line i'm going to put it in this file and then i can just do do sim.2 we'll do that at the end so now what I'm going to do is compile test bench. So vcom ripple carry adder test bench dot vhd. Hopefully I haven't no I haven't messed anything up. So it's compiled, and eventually in the work library, you will see there there's a plus sign next to it, and there is a ripple carry adder entity. Okay, it's been compiled. Now we need to compile all our simulation. Uh, sorry, all our source v designs. But before that, let me take this compilation command. And put it in our script file, the do file. Okay, so I can add comments here. Compile uh, test bench. Then compile sources. We come go up on directory and then star dot vhc. Just compile all the sources. And there it's done. Okay, and if you go into the work library. Uh, again, it's taking some time actually on my tablet A because my tablet B, I'm also recording this lecture, so there are all my entities compiled. So let me go in here. Okay. So the source are compiled. Now start simulation. So for that, the command is vsim. And actually, if you are paying attention to the model sim transcript window, you will see that as I type the command, vsim, it actually displays a help message right there, usage message. So now I'm going to ripple carry out a test bench, but that's the name of my entity without the vhdl, I mean, not the vhd extension. And model sim does its thing where it's starting up and it's loading everything and it starts the simulation. And it basically gives you a warning here that this port will contribute value uns undefined, not unsigned, to the signal network. And once it loads up, so again, model sim is 
really slow because I'm not running on my tablet. I'm also recording the lecture. So and as it starts up, you can see the models in window changed. Yes, in the sense, now we have what is called as this wave window, which allows you to see all the waveforms, which are whatever waveforms you want, and I'll show you how to add waveforms shortly. It's got name of our objects from our test benches, but let's just uh, finally look at the transcript window, and like I said, this LEDG is not being driven by anything. So it's saying, it's giving us a warning. That's fine, we understand where the warning is coming from, so we can safely ignore it. Let me maximize this. All right, model team is now waiting for us to run the simulation. But what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna use the add wave command to add all my sig signals here to the wave window. So there, it's all added. Now I'm gonna, I can also script this. this um, and the reason why I don't type this directly and then run the script file is I'm, I'll definitely have errors here when you're, when you're doing more complicated design. So it's always a good idea to make sure that these commands work first, and then add objects, and then do the scripting. Objects to wave window star. So let's just run the simulation. And usually I don't put the run simulate run command on 100 nanoseconds. I don't think, let's see without. Okay, there it is. And I don't add the run command to my script because that's, I can just type it in. So now what you can do is it's given you some data, okay? And of course, the LED is undefined, but that's fine. So you click in the wave window. You have this cursor here. What you do is you go up here to this zoom toolbar, say zoom full, and you can see that actually our input is initially zero and two, then it goes to five and two, and we do get some activity, if you will, on my hex displays. Yes, my hex three and hex two are off, my hex one and hex zero, like hex zero changes, yes. So in other words, if you notice, if we know our, we should be better know our seven segment decoder code by now. So hex one is always zero, that makes sense. Here we have to get a two, and here we have to get five plus two as seven. Okay, that looks right, but the power of model sim is, or any good simulator is, now I can go on to my device under test, for example, which is my ripple carry adder, and you will notice under my objects, I get all my internal signals of my ripple carry adder. So what I would like to see is if you think about it, one way to verify if my sum is correct is I look at the units digit and I look at my tens digit. So I select these using my mouse, left click on, and then shift left click, right click, standard window stuff, add wave, and now you can see that model sim actually gives you in the transcript window the commands needed to do this. So what I can do is I can copy these commands now. Uh, let's see, let me go in here, add wave star, then I can do add wave, I believe a separator in the internal signals. Let me make sure this works first. Add to the wave window the separator and label it internal signals. Again, this model sim is just no. Uh, so there is uh, no. I forgot what this is called. So I can look at the add wave command. Uh, let's see, add wave. So hello comments, color, depth, divider. That's what it's called. So let me just make sure of that. Add wave divider internal signals. Okay. So there it is. Okay. So beautiful, right? So let me remove these. Uh, and I can of course change the radix. Uh, so whatever you want, so powerful, right? So edit, delete, let's remove that. So let me do this add wave divider internal signals here. And then let me go back up, pressing the up arrow to use model since history. Or I can just use this. Almost out of time, I have only 30 seconds left, but I think we have basically confirmed part of our functionality. So insert point right there. Now what I'm gonna do is, let me do this. Let me do one final hurrah in the sense I'm gonna quit. No, let's quit, F means just get out of model sim. No, just quit the simulator. And now I'm gonna do a sim.do 
and run the simulation and hopefully we can call it a day. So there it is and you can see it's just going through the script to, to, to very fast. It's going to load the simulation. Well, it's, it should be very fast, but again, I'm doing this on my tablet and I'm recording the lecture. So looks like it's going through. I, I could pause the lecture, but let's just give it time to finish. And yeah, let's just run the simulation and then stop the lecture, but almost there. So there it is, okay? So run for 100 nanoseconds. So there it is, and you can see, wait a minute, why am I getting seven and zero? Well, let's just zoom full, and okay, here it is, right? In a sense, our units digit here, uh, let's see, our cursor is here, here is a two, that makes sense, you're adding 0 and a 2, you get 2. You add 5 and 2, you get 7. So the unit digit is 7, our tens digit is 0. Okay. So that makes sense. And you can, of course, check how you can ask, hey, how do I check more values? Well, go back to your test bench and just do more stuff. Okay, just add more stuff. That's about it for this lecture. So next time what we're going to do, we're going to look at what is called as an in-system logic analyzer, signal tap something that you can download along with your design onto the FPGA. So you can check the functionality, the hardware functionality, but please understand that SignalTap uh, is limited by the amount of memory as of now, on chip memory on the FPGA. So you should always do a functional simulation of your design, make sure it's functionally correct, and then go on to the next step, which will either be a timing intensive simulation or downloading the design onto your board and doing a and synthesizable, spelling mistake there, and working on the uh, using signal tap or an external logic analyzer. So anyway, see you next time.